Hello, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today we're looking at a first submission by Jeanette with her horse Indy. Indy is a four-year-old crossbred Lusitano paint thoroughbred cross, um, but he looks like a pretty nice sort there. The first thing I'd like to say is the same thing I said in your last video, is I'd really like to see you get a lunge line that is not so heavy. I think that lunge line that you're working with here just leaves way too much slack in the rain all the time. Remember, we're looking for consistency in everything. Consistency in our contact with the horse, consistency with our contact with the horse, uh, with its rhythm. And the problem with this line is just so heavy that there's no way you can keep a uh, direct contact with either the halter or if you had a bridle on the horse or with a bridle. And ultimately, remember, we want lunging to be very similar to riding from the ground, the whip being your leg and the rein being the rein, you know, which ultimately we can get contact with the bridle. So I'd just like to see you get a lighter lunge line. I highly suggest just a web cotton line um, so you don't have something so heavy for you to deal with because it, it is, it's, looks like a, a big man's rope, you might say. So anyway, um, getting back to the lunging here, the next thing I'd like to see is uh, what I see in this video is just not enough consistency, and that's what we want to be looking for. Remember, the number one thing that we lunge horses for, A, is to get them working over their backs and to build up their strength and to build up their rhythm so they get locked into the gait. So I'd like to see the horse doing more consistent work that is on a, on a circle that you can try to keep the circle a little more consistently round and by doing that you're going to need to be able to maintain contact with his mouth and so that we can get a good consistent rhythm. Now this walk is not bad. I'd like to see him stretch down a little more than he's doing. Um, it's kind of an ordinary walk you might say. There's not really working over his back in that walk. He could swing a lot more than he's doing and being a four-year-old you want to get that started right away. I mean it's very important if we get this work happening correctly when they're young it's a lot easier as they grow up you know, and by the time you have a horse at six years old, you have a pretty trained horse, you know. Um, that's pretty nice over that pole there. But once again, I'd like to see a little, a little more swing in that walk, just a little more action, so to speak. I'd like to see you keeping the slack out of the line, because once again, you see how he looks to the outside, he looks to the inside, but you have so much slack in that rein because of its weight that you can't really keep a consistent contact with the horse, which means you can't really keep him in a consist on a consistent circle, nor can you cons keep him in a consistent rhythm. So I think that's going to be the number one thing you're going to want to change is get yourself a lighter whip, a lighter lunge line. Now, I know a lot of the Western people really like these lunge lines. Um, and great, that's great. But for dressage training and to get a closer contact, you need to get something that is not so heavy. Um, now, the next thing I'd say is, you know, you're, start, you're talking about riding this horse already and you haven't even started him in a bridle. So the next thing you need to do is get this horse started carrying a bit in his mouth. So that's the, that's the thing I do right away with young horses. Actually, I start them just the way you're starting this one. It's in, in just a halter or a lunging halter that's a little stiffer or like what you have there, which is a Western version of the same thing. Remember all of these different things, lunging cavissons. Uh, you know, these kind of uh, bridles that have the knots on the side, it, you know, or a bozal, they all work in the same way. Instead of putting pressure on the bit, they put pressure on the nose and the cartilage of the horse's nose, which you have to be careful with. So same thing here in your trot. You see how he's looking to the outside. Um, though you're getting some good stuff, I'd like to see, your, like to see you work towards a more consistently round circle. So you're kind of letting the horse travel in squares, and he's not really developing a good rhythm. So I'd like to see him just a little bit more active there, and I'd like to see you keep him on a more consistent circle. Um, the poles at this point, you know, it's not bad for the horse, but it's not the most useful thing in the world either. You know, and once again, now you're slowing back down to a walk again. I'd like to see you get the horse going more consistently. Now, the other thing that I have a problem with is this thing of making horses turn around at the end of the lunge line and letting them stop and come at you and doing this the way you're doing it. We never do this this way. We always, when we're ready to turn a horse around, we ask it to stop. It stops square. We go up to the horse and we turn it around. Because the problem is when you do this thing of letting them flip around on the end of the lunge line, which is what's happening to you, is the horse starts flipping around, especially with this rope that you have, because you can't really get contact with his mouth because it's too heavy. So, you know, every time he decides to flip around, he does, and you've lost him. And once again, it's not so much the flipping around, it's that you've lost the consistency of the rhythm of the gait. And you don't just don't want to get the horse into the idea. And I see, you know, there may be people who are able to do this, and it works really well. But most amateurs that I see 
uh, trying to learn this method of lunging where you're letting the horse flip around and change directions at the end of a line, they end up with a horse that every time it decides it wants to flip around, it does. And then when they start to get into working in the canter and the trot, as you do later on in this, it becomes much more difficult. So my suggestion is to you just simply get the horse moving more active, you know, once again, get the slack out of that line, a more active walk. And I wouldn't even bother with this pole issue until you have more rhythm in the horse and can keep him more consistently on a rhythm. Because, you know, to work over a pole, the same thing as going up hills. If the horse isn't working over its back, it's only counterproductive. It's only damaging to the horse's leg. So once again, once you understand that, it simplifies what you're going about doing. So I would like to see you get a much more consistent rhythm going in the horse, get him trotting consistently, get him so you can stay on a consistent size circle, and then add in your poles on the ground if you wish but if you do it before you do that you kind of get what you're getting here which is kind of like not a lot of consistency though I do like the way he's stretching down and once again proves once again if you leave if you take young horses and just lunge them correctly and get them going they will stretch on their own it's people who stop horses from stretching because they try to and people put them up in too short to draw reins or side reins and and they stop that from happening but this is not a bad trot for him now I would like to see it a little bit act a little more active and once again this could be a much better moving horse than what I'm seeing here when he gets working over his back. At the moment, his back is not very involved. His head kind of comes up and down, and his back legs are, are too inactive, and there's little little flexion, if any, in the hocks there. So we'd like to see him get more active and get stretching and stay there consistently. Same thing here, this thing you're doing here of letting him stop and turn to you, you know, and then getting halfway to him. This really has no purpose in training. Um, I know it occupies time, and a lot of the natural horsemanship people do this but I see more of this kind of thing it ends up with the horse stopping on the people too often you know once again there's certain things that certain people can do you know an expert can do like this thing of lunging horses on very with very short ropes and these short little whips that people are using also you know an expert who keeps his eye on the back end of the horse like a boxer is looking for the punches to come but for amateur riders to do it that way it's very very dangerous and it's even very dangerous for the so-called professionals to do it that way and many of them end up getting hurt and once again, the whole point of lunging correctly is to put you outside of the danger zone. You have a long lunge whip that, and a long line that keeps you out of the strike zone of those hind legs. You know, and once again, to teach the horse to flip around on the end of a line just creates a lot of problems. So I'd like to see you do more of one thing and get one thing going consistently. And once again, this kind of flipping around in the lunge line really has no value in terms of the training of the horse, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it just kind of teaches the horse something that can really become a bad habit. And once again, yes, he flipped around on you, but the walk is not consistent. You know, it was very slow. All he did was kind of drag himself around. And once, once again, when we, want, when we do want to turn the horse around, we want it to do a big wide turn so it's able to maintain the rhythm. So once you understand that following the rhythm is the most important thing a trainer does, is getting the horse to lock into consistent rhythms and not do exercises that causes the horse to lose rhythm. So when you do, it, it, you, know, it, you lose the gymnastic quality of that exercise. So once again, I'd like to see you just get the horse going more consistently rather than all this stopping going, you know, one minute of trotting, you know, one minute of, tr of walking and then flip him around in the line, which he doesn't do very well. And he just kind of loses all the rhythm in the walk. So once again, you know, smaller, consistent circles, you know, maybe not necessarily so much smaller, but just consistent, a line that you can keep contact. I'd like to see the horse much more active. With young horses, you know, you can get away with some of this stuff, you know, with very dull horses. But, you know, if you start working hot horses and tried to work them in this way, you'd be in big trouble. And, I, and that's where people do get into trouble, you know, because hot horses, you need to, you know, work them and get them working so they relax and get into the contact. You know, so while this is not bad, you could you could be doing a lot more for yourself. I would be putting, at this point, I'd be putting a bridle in the horse's mouth so we could start carrying it, a correctly fitted bit, just a loose ring snaffle, double jointed if you like. That's what we use on all of our horses. And, you know, and just put your lunging halter there over the top of that, like a cavison, same difference, doesn't make any difference. It all works in the same way. In other words, a cavison works the same way as this does. It just gives the horse a little pressure on the cartilage of the nose rather than on the bars of the horse's mouth as a bit would. But you want to start the horse carrying the bridle now because you don't want to ever get on a horse until it has accepted contact with the bridle. That's one of our cardinal rules. So once again, I suggest you go back and watch our, our, uh, our videos on lunging. 
And once again, this is a good place to start, though I would just like to see you getting a lot more consistent gates out of the horse and start developing it moving. It isn't important at all at this level of a horse that it learned to flip around on the end of a lunge line or change directions in slow motion because it doesn't do you any good. We want to keep everything much more consistent, rhythmic, and stick to something long enough. And then when you ask the horse to halt, you know, when I work young horses, you know, I only ask them to halt or slow down once, and that's at the end of the end of the session. You know, if I'm going to change directions, they halt once in that direction, turn around, and go the other way. You know, the biggest mistake people make. Now, once again, you can get away with that with duller type, you know, warm blood type horses and cold blood type horses. But if you were to train a warm, a hot blooded horse this way, you would be in big trouble very quickly because they'll have you tied up in the knots and. The ropes run around you before you know it. So better to practice than the first time. So same thing here. I feel this horse is going to be a pretty good mover, but he's not moving that way right now. He's rather hollow. His back legs aren't really coming through. He's not connecting across his top line. And that will happen when he learns to stretch and keep it consistent. So once again, once you start getting him to stretch, we want to keep it there consistently. So this is a little better, more active trot. But once again, the way you went over that pole there, you can see how that just all that did was shorten up his stride. He didn't go over it in the same stride. So if you can't go over the pole without changing the stride, it's not doing you any good. You know, all he's doing there is pulling his neck up and pulling even more with his shoulders than he was to begin with. So that pole exercise, yes, it's teaching him to go over something on the ground, but it's not teaching him to go over something on the ground correctly. You know, and there's kind of what happens. That's exactly an example of what I'm talking about. Because he's learned to flip around, he's trying to do that on you. And now you've lost the circle, you know, and you have to sort of throw that big old rope at him, you know, and that really is not a good thing to be doing. You know, so you need to be able to use your whip a little more there, get him back out in the large circle. I like the fact that he's a lot more active now. Now, there's a good stretch. Now, there's where we'd like to see him get to, what you just had there for one second, but we want to see him keep that, you know, and be able to maintain it. I would get the horse into that stretch and keep it there for five minutes, you know, before you change directions. Then simply ask him to halt, go up and change the direction of the horse yourself rather than ask him to flip around on the end of a lunge line. So once again, you're getting a little ahead of him there, so he's starting to think about flipping around on you right there. The head's starting to go to the outside. Once again, you have too much slack in the rein here. And that's mostly due to the type of rain that you're using there. It's just too heavy to do you any good. That is for you to maintain consistent contact with the mouth of the horse. So once again, you got a pretty good stretch there. That's what you should. Now remember, you want to reward the horse when it's going well. So what you want to do, if you're going to come back to the walk, like when I'm first teaching a horse to stretch, is as soon as if, if it were in that period of stretching, then I'd let it come back to a walk. You know, but I wouldn't let it come back to a walk until it does stretch. So, you know, when you trot it around there and it's going upside down, it goes over the pole a few times hollow, and then you bring him back to a walk, you've just rewarded him for all of that hollow work that he just did. So what you want to do is use the stretch as, your, as sort of your signal point for the re reward. Let's think of it that way. So get him into a trot, and as soon as he stretches the first time, then go ahead and let him walk, but not until he stretches. So if he doesn't stretch, keep him going in the trot until you see at least the first indication of the stretch then you can let him walk but you know once again we want to reward good behavior and once again you see how he drug his back legs over the poles that time you know this pole exercise is you know once again yes you're getting to go over a pole but it isn't doing him any good gymnastically and you know other than the fact that it's getting him used to going over something but I don't think this horse would be terribly terrified of that one or another from the look of him so but once again it's okay to do that stuff but not until you can keep a consistent trot and keep the horse over his back so the next thing you want to do is once as i said is get the bridle on the horse so he can start carrying a bit you know you never want to get on a horse until uh, it starts till it has formed a mouth. That is when his mouth stays quiet with a bit, with no contact at all, and you feel a nice, you see a nice softening, you see a nice foam happening in the corners, and he's not opening his mouth. Then a horse is ready to take contact with a bridle, but not until. If you do it until before, then you're just asking for a fight, and that's what happens to so many people as they get on too soon. If you read the books from the Spanish Riding School, I mean, they would lunge horses for a full year before they ever rode them to build up their backs and get them into contact. So when they got on, the horse was trained; he just ride away. So that's what you want to do. So once again, much less of this kind of, you know, stopping and flipping around, though you're just halting there, and that's good. Uh, so once again, let's get you in a lighter lunge line. Let's get a bit on the horse. And then once he's carrying the bit, then you want to put a surcingle on the horse. And same thing here, this kind of backing up. Oh, this is okay, you know, but once again, you see how slow and ponderous it was. He's kind of dragging him backwards. You know, when we ultimately teach horses to rein back correctly, they rein back from the impulsion. That is impulsion that wants to move for the, through the body, and we simply close the front door. 
and open the back by lightening our seat a little bit and the horse will flow backwards. So yes, we want a horse to move away from us though in the cross ties and stuff. So a little bit of this is not bad, but you know, a little bit of it goes a long way. You should not be spending a lot of time reining back young horses. It's also very hard on their hocks. So, you know, whenever I see somebody who's spending a lot of time reining back and you see now all he's doing is getting fussy on you, you know, I think you're putting the cart before the horse here, so to speak. And, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of that and be done with it quickly. But I wouldn't even do that on an, on an everyday basis. You know, what you want to do now is get the horse consistent. You want to get it working over its back and consistent working gates so that you can build some strength so that when you start riding the horse, you'll have something to ride. So get a bit in his mouth and get him carrying that, get a search single on him so he starts getting used to a girth before you put a saddle on. You certainly have a couple of weeks at least with just a circle sur single around his back. And then, of course, working with the side reins, getting him into contact and stretching over the back. So that we can not only get the horse used to things, which is a lot of what this this sort of Western, you know, natural horsemanship is stuff is, and that's all good, getting the horse used to stuff, but creating a physically fit, correct horse is a whole nother issue, you know, and uh, that's what is really must be paramount in your training if you're going to use this horse for anything athletic. Thank you very much. This has been Art Will Favor from Archer Ride. Look forward, look forward to the next one.